A while back, we had a visitor that left us a comment um, and was asking about attenuators and what do they do, how do they work. So today's video, we're going to geek out a little bit on some optics, um, what they are and what they're about, and then we're going to talk about when we would use attenuators and what they are. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Keith Van Wimmer at Vantech Consulting. Um, today, again, as I uh, mentioned in the intro, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, attenuators. But in order to understand attenuators, we need to understand optics. Okay. And what I got in front of me here is just some, uh, some various little optics. So these are um, XFPs, these are uh, SFPs, and these are bidirectional or bi di SFPs. Um, these guys plug into the equipment. And they're the, they're the lasers. And so each one of these, as we get down the road here, um, each one of these has specifications and what their capabilities are. Um, so these guys here, you know, blue bales, they, they typically uh, signify uh, 13, 10 nanometers. Um, these guys, so the difference between these is they have a transmit and a receive fiber. And this is a bi die which only has one fiber that goes into it, right? So one LC. And you notice that these guys have, um, one is green, which is 1550, and the other one's purple, which is a 1490, because these face each other with fiber between, and they're simultaneously transmitting and basically doing, uh, or are doing wave division multiplexing. So um, these operate as a, uh, as a pair. And you just wanna make sure you can't have 1550 going, you know, both directions at the same time. It's, it's not gonna work, okay? We're gonna get errors. Um, so one of the things that we wanna talk about is um, all of these things have specifications. I mean, this is, you know, 10, 11 pages of specifications. You don't have to read the whole thing, but uh, the point is, is that you need to understand what launch levels are, what receive levels are. Um, and this is how we get to, again, back to the attenuators and what they do. So just in general, so this kind of put this in perspective while we're, while we're discussing this, an attenuator is a device that you can put into a network that will put in a specific amount of loss, okay, or attenuate the signal. So this guy here is a 5 dB attenuator. And what would happen is you would plug this into the bulkhead and then your jumper would go into here from your light source and it would knock down the signal by 5 dB. So again, if you were launching out a neg 7 uh, dBm, we'd now be launching out at a neg 12 dBm, and that's what would be going into the fiber. Um, it's important to understand and, and do your calculations. If you haven't already watched the uh, video on doing loss budgets and things like that, um, you might want to take a view of that and understand what the fiber is, um, what our network looks like, and, and what a loss budget is. What we're going to talk about right now is what's called the power budget. Okay, so that kind of uh, that kind of couples with the loss budget. So let's move some of this stuff out of the way. So right now we're looking at the specs for this guy, and this guy is going to be very similar. So the data rate is this is a one gig, um, the central wavelength. So this is our what's called our um, line width. So it goes from 1545 to 1556 with our central wavelength at 1550. This is what we're really looking for is our average output power. So the average output power minimum is a minus zero with a maximum of a plus five. So this is the number we're gonna use. It's outputting at plus five dBm. So again, what we know about dBm is that's an absolute value, right? So that's when we're talking about power, that's your absolute. We come down to our next section. So this is our transmitter section. We're gonna come down to our receiver section. And the receiver sensitivity here is a minimum of minus three, right? So what that means is if we're above minus three, we're too hot. We're gonna start um, oversaturating this. It's gonna start, you know, think, think of a, think of a, you know, 
four-wheel drive truck with super bright halogen headlights driving down the road, you know, coming right at you on a dark mountain road. And what happens? You start blinking, right? Because the lights are so bright, it's it's just blinding you. It's it's oversaturating your your receptors, your eyeballs. So that's what happens with this. If you oversaturate the receivers on these um, optics, they start to, to uh, blink, right? And that blinking equates to bit errors, and bit errors in the network, bad, all right? So receiver sensitivity uh, minimum is a minus three or neg three, and again, we're in DBM. We have a receiver sensitivity of minus 25, and then our detection threshold assertion is um, minus 29, which means this is where it can't uh, differentiate between a good signal and a bad signal. So we're gonna start getting errors. And the lowest rate, the D assertion, is the lowest rate that it will recognize a signal. Um, again, these are not usable values. These are just uh, optical specifications, but a minus 40 dBm. Um, so the point is, is you may see a link light on, but it's not going to do data. There's going to be bit errors, and it's just not going to it's not going to transmit correctly. So this is the number that we're worried about: maximum input power minus three. Um, we want to be below that, and um, the lowest we can go is a neg 25 dBm. Okay, so those are our values. So this is where we start doing our power budget and start calculating this out and thinking about um, what we're going to do. So again, just to give you another another example, um, this is the the Finisar, right? So these are the 1310s. These guys here are rated for 10 kilometers, right? And so their minimum is minus six on their output power, uh, minus one, and then their um, receiver sensitivity is in neg 14. So you know you kind of go the minus six to the neg 14. It gives us um, uh, eight roughly um, eight dB of difference there. So, you know, we want to be in, in kind of, that's the area we're working with. That's our power budget. So we want to be somewhere between the, the neg six and the neg 14. So let's call it uh, neg 10. If you don't know what the, um, what the specifications are for the, for the optics, um, you can just take the part number. There's a little part number on here, punch that into the, into the, uh, old Google and it will come back and it'll give you a specification sheet, okay? So we got our lab set up. Um, this guy here is going to be our, our light source, um, our SFP, so to speak. You know, and this is gonna be sitting in our equipment. Um, so this is uh, output at neg seven dBm. We have our receiver over on this side and this is going to be the far end equipment, so to speak. And then um, it is set up for so you have to set this for the right, uh, right frequency. So it's set for 1550, we're in dBm, so that's good. Um, these are our, our attenuators. So let's just figure out what our base is, right? So we're gonna turn on our laser. Um, we're getting uh, neg seven, nine. So we'll just call it neg eight for math. Um, Let's just say for grins that we want to get this down somewhere between 12 and 13 um, dBm. All right, that's that's our sweet spot. Let's say the, the minimum we can go is a neg 18. Um, we're running a little hot right now, so um, let's let's see if we can get this down. So this is where we would um, go with our attenuator. So let's say we want to get down to a, a neg 12, so eight. We need 4 dB. We don't have a 4 dB attenuator, so we can either try a 3 or a 5. So let's throw in the uh, 3, turn off our laser here. We'll throw in the, um, the 3 dB and see where that gets us. And remember, our target's going to be a neg 12. Okay, we're going to set on our laser again. I'm not quite there. We're about uh, 1 dB and change off. So let's see if we can get this down a little closer to our to our uh, target, and these already have been uh, cleaned, by the way, just to, okay, and we'll turn this on again. So now we're at 12 and a half, neg 12 and a half dBm. So that fits within our budget, that's perfect. That's where we wanna be. So this is the one that we would leave. 
Now there's different ways that they, that they make these attenuators. One is uh, air isolation, so basically an air gap. And you know they create uh, a, a calculated amount of loss in there, set the air gap, um, and then that's it. That's how they manufacture. Um, there's also a uh, attenuation fiber that they use. So in other words, what they'll do is when they manufacture the fiber, the glass, they'll actually put dopants in it that will create um, higher loss so or higher attenuation absorption loss etc so you think about um, our standard g.652 fiber it has an attenuation rate of dot three per kilometer right so you know we're talking about you know five millimeters of fiber or something so again the doping they use inside these is um, is pretty crazy the other thing that they can do is um, use an absorption uh, glass so um, they'll put in a, a like a lens in there that will go through and, and kind of um, absorb some of the light. There's also a um, what they call a, a, a collimator, right? And you might see something. It's a it looks like a uh, patch cord, and what it's got is it's got like a little screw on it. I'll throw a picture up here, but it's got the little screw on there, and basically um, you can actually dial that in. So if you're looking at your meter, you could. Uh, dial that in take a little you know tweaker screwdriver and you know just kind of put that in to get the exact amount uh, okay another piece of equipment that we have is uh, a variable attenuator right so this guy here um, we can select the the wavelength and um, and basically set this up so that it will um, put in a, a adjustable amount just going to hit our lambda this is our wavelength button and down at the stop it Stop it. Down at the bottom here, it says right now at 1490 and 1550, right? And so by turning the dial, the minimum amount of loss that we can insert here is one in, in, uh, 1.15. So again, um, let's just get our baseline. So 7.91, we want to hit, let's, well, on this guy, let's say we're going to go down to 15, right? So this has the um, one port is in, one port is out. And again, this has already been scoped and cleaned. All right. And now, as we're looking at it, that matches seven, the one, right? And so, you know, we're, we're losing our, uh, our one dB here. So let's go ahead and turn this up. And we're just going to dial this in. So we're going to look over here. We didn't do a calculation, right? But we're going to go over here and uh, we're looking for 15. Okay, 1502. I think we can live with that. So that took us um, a 7.4 dB. So you could, if you're going to make this a permanent change, you would go find and see if you got like a... Uh, so this, this guy here, this is a, um, this is a 7 dB, so 7.12. So that would uh, theoretically work. We could just plug that in and make it permanent. And, you know, attenuators come in all kinds of little different shapes. This is an LC attenuator. It's 15 dB of drop here. Um, you know, the thing you got to watch for is sometimes we have these guys, which are uh, gender benders, LC to um, FC. And sometimes these aren't just adapters or gender benders. Sometimes, you know, the little sticker's falling off and you've got, uh, this is actually an attenuator. So um, don't don't mix these things up, right? That could be bad. The, the worst attenuator, in my opinion, is they have one that is built into a bulkhead. And so you can put that in the panel. That's really dangerous because if it's not labeled correctly and nobody knows about it and you come up and you're working a circuit and you're plugging it in and you got 12 dB of loss, you know, you're not figuring this out, man. You're out there with the OTDR trying to shoot it, trying to figure out what's going on, and it's all because of this guy, right? So um, just in my personal opinion, I would never, uh, never advocate for using a bulkhead type of attenuator. Anyway, they're fairly simple, um, you know, simple and easy devices. I hope this clarifies where you would use them and why you would use them and uh, what they do and how to kind of figure out which one you need. 
We appreciate all the subscribers. You know, it's terrific. We really do appreciate it. Until next time, be safe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.